Good morning. Welcome to Radio Friends on this Christmas Day 2020. Merry Christmas to you and yours. I know it's probably a, a different kind of Christmas uh, and Christmas Day for most of you because you're not able to get together with the people that you have for years and years, but you got them in your heart. All right? I hope you do. We've got one of our friends here with us today, Larry Brown. Pleasure to have you, Larry. Good Merry morning. Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. You have a special story today? Well, it has been my tradition for a number of years yeah. to create a new story for Christmas each year. So right. this, is, this is the new one. All right. Uh, so for Christmas 2020, here is Larry Brown. He won't even tell me the name of the story until it's over. So here's Larry Brown with his own Christmas story. Now, when the doctor and nurses presented newborn Wanda to Tanya Jennings, the doctor said, I have some difficult news. And the doctor explained that, that little Wanda was born without a right hand. The arm just came down to where the wrist would be, and that was it. But he said, with some minor surgery, we can make it look better. But otherwise, she's perfectly healthy. Well, it was difficult in those early months and years for her parents. They, they were wrestling with their own guilts and fears, and how could they teach her? But yet, you know, Wanda learned to, to crawl and to walk, to eat and to play, as if it was perfectly normal to have only one hand. But the stress increased for Wanda when she went to kindergarten and elementary school, because there she uh, faced the, the teasing, the taunts from other kids. In fact, there was a little song that they would sing almost in a derisive way. Wanda, 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 do you want a hand? And so there would be many times that she would come home into the loving embrace of her mother with tears, and, and her mother would comfort her and say, it's okay. Well, as she went on into elementary school, she uh, was an avid reader. Uh, and, and despite the sort of feelings she had about being different, she was verbal and articulate and very interested in her studies. Her favorite place really was in her bedroom at night, looking out into the window into starry nights. And that was the place where she had her wishes and hopes and dreams and probably expressed her own doubts. Well, she was in the sixth grade when a program came to the school, one of those assemblies where everyone comes down to see a performer, and there were two young women who were very skilled ventriloquists, and there with their puppets, they just made those puppets come alive. And as Wanda watched that, she watched all of their moves, she listened carefully, and she knew what she could do. She said, I can do that. I, I, can, I can hold a puppet in my lap and manipulate it with my left hand. I can learn to talk without moving my lips. I can distract the audience with the movement of the puppets. And when she got home and announced what she wanted to be, her parents were supportive. Now, the question was, what kind of a puppet? Well, that was to be answered one night as she was looking out into this cold, rather wintry, starry night and saw on the ground a mother possum with a number of little babies, joeys. And she saw these little joeys with their little pointy noses and their oversized ears, their little black eyes and their little squeals and whimpers as they were trying to hang on to mother or chase behind. They were so cute. And she knew. And so she announced to her folks that I want a possum puppet. Well, her mother knew a seamstress who made stuffed animals and they could work that out. And sure enough, well, as she was waiting, she began to practice with her other stuffed animals, and on Christmas Day, Mother Possum arrived as a gift, complete with pocket and six little joys with Velcro to attach to the mother. Well, right away, Wanda began to practice stories, stories she knew, and then to make up stories with her new puppet. As she went on into high school, she began then to do little programs for selected audiences. And even on into college, she began to do some entertaining occasionally with audience she trusted. Uh, she had been given by her folks a plastic hand, and she really didn't care for it. It just sort of was there. It was limp. It couldn't move, and she would rather just go without it. Well, in college, she was earning her degree in library science. And one night, she got an inspiration. I could volunteer at the library, and I could do stories, introduce books and new stories with my possum puppet. 
And sure enough. And in fact, when she graduated from college, she went to work for a library, and there she was, entertaining kids, telling the stories. When Christmas would come around, it was kind of difficult for her, though, because when she would hear the wishes of the children, she would go back into some of her own doubts and so on. You know, she had been offered at one point the, a mechanical arm, and she just hated the claw-like devices. She'd become comfortable with her. In fact, she had gotten so comfortable with who she was, she chose a stage name, and she chose Wanda Hand because she was comfortable with who she was. And so there she was entertaining as Wanda Hand and Possum. Well, it was just before Christmas, she got a certified letter from doctors James and Marcella Long. And they went on to explain that they had a daughter, Emery, who was with autism, and that she'd been relatively no communication until one of those programs when she came alive. And they had gotten together with other surgical associates and were going to offer Wanda the opportunity for a high-tech, flexible hand. They just wanted her to come over and bring possum. And Wanda thought, can I do that? I'm comfortable with who I am. How can I say no to this tremendous gift? What should I do? Well, it was a few days after Christmas that Wanda arrived at the long home, and there was James and Marcella, and, and Emery was down the hallway as she cautiously approached, but as she came up toward Wanda, she just looked and said, Possum. And of course, she had Possum. So James and Marcella and Emery, Wanda and Possum, sat down together for a Christmas feast. And I call that story, Wanda Hand and Possum. Oh, that's good. That's good. I like that, Larry, and I appreciate, I appreciate the meaning uh, behind it all. And this is a brand new story that you just created. Brand new story. First kind of, time on Radio Friend. That's, that's right. <laughs> and I kind of leave it for you to decide, you know, how it ultimately comes yeah. out. So we don't know, did she? We don't she, know. <laughs> I don't know. Probably uh, <laughs> she let it go because she was very content and happy with her life as it was. Yeah. Which hopefully we all are today. Larry, Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming out. If you want to contact Larry, it's brownstory at hotmail.com. Uh, I hope to see you many more times in 2021. Let's do it. Okay. And if you're out and about today, on Christmas Day, please wear your mask. It's good for you and everyone around you. Bye-bye.